So I'm going to show you how to log into your managed Apple ID uh, from the school district. And so first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up system preferences uh, and I can get those under the Apple or in my applications folder. And then once I've logged into system preferences at the top, you should see an option that says sign into your Apple ID. Now, if you are already signed in to an Apple ID, uh, this is how you can also verify that you're signed into the right one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit sign in, or if you've already signed into one, you can go ahead and click on it. Your school Apple ID is the same one that we used when we set up our iPads. Um, it is going to be probably the first part of your email address, unless you were hired in the last few years, and then some of those may be your last name, first initial, maybe 0102 after it. Um, but the big difference is, is it should end in Apple ID dot psdr3.org. Now, once I do that, I'm going to click next and it is going to ask for that password. Now that password is one that you set on your own when you set it up on your iPad or logged into your iPad. So you may have something common that you use on a lot of things. It may be something unique that you created. Um, I know a lot of teachers chose to use the same thing they may use for Google or something like that, but um, if you need help, I can reset you, um, but yeah, one way or another, you're going to log in. Now from here, you may get a message sent to your cell phone uh, that may ask you for a six-digit code to authenticate. Uh, and when you do that, you'll get a text message, and then in that text message, it will contain a six-digit code. Uh, it is a unique code that gets regenerated every time. So I enter in that six-digit code that came from my text. And then once I've done that, it should log you into your managed Apple ID. Now, it's going to ask you, do you want to merge what you already have in here with your Apple ID? Uh, what that means is, is if you already have a calendar, contacts, things like that on your device currently, do you want to merge those things with your school one? So it's up to you whether you merge or don't merge. Now, once I've done that and I've logged in, you should see yourself signed in here and the email address that's listed underneath should have the Apple ID.psdr3.org in there. Now, if you when you clicked on your managed Apple ID or clicked on your Apple ID, it was a uh, not a school Apple ID. Then what I can do is I can go here to overview and I can tell it to sign out. It will ask for your password when you sign out, uh, but once you've signed out, then you will again be able to sign in to your school Apple ID, which is what we need everyone to do on their school device because this is how we're going to back things up. Now, once I've signed in, what I can do is I'm going to click over here on where it says iCloud. This is where it's going to control which apps on my iPad are going to be um, used in this iCloud account. So what is the cloud? And essentially, um, what's going to happen is when I have multiple devices logged into a cloud account, what that means is it won't necessarily store uh, or things on one device or the other. Those things are going to live in the cloud and they will be synced down to all of the devices that are attached to that cloud account. So for example, um, I have a whole bunch of different things I can choose to sync in here. I can choose to sync photos, for example. If I sign in my computer and my school iPad, both to my same managed Apple ID account, and I turn on iCloud Photos, then what that means is, is it's gonna sync all of those things together. So all of the photos that live in my computer are gonna go into the cloud. All of the photos from my school iPad are gonna go into the cloud. And then any photo that was in one spot but not the other will then get synced down to those devices. So. I will have all of the photos that lived in all of my devices um, accessible to me anywhere that I'm at. Now, I can do the same thing with contacts, calendars, reminders, notes, Safari bookmarks. So if I sync my Safari bookmarks, uh, if I bookmark things, my history, things that I've, sites that I've visited on one device will be accessible from my other devices as well. And the cloud is like the gatekeeper that stores that information, backs it up for you to make sure it's safe, and it passes it back and forth between all of the devices that are logged into that same account. So you pick and choose what devices you want logged in and you pick and choose what information you want to be backed up or synced. But in a school environment, when we have multiple devices, we can sign up with both of those devices. 
we can turn syncing on on both of those devices and all of our stuff can live in all of those places and be accessible in all of those places. Um, Apple gives us 200 gigabytes of storage space, so we should have plenty of space to be able to store just about everything we would need um, in the cloud and be able to access it from all of our stuff. Now, by default, we wanna make sure that iCloud Drive uh, is checked. iCloud Drive is what we're gonna to use to back up our device. Um, once it's checked, there's a box over here that says Options, and under Options, we wanna make sure we check the box that says Desktop and Documents folder. Now, what that does is, is anytime I create something and I save it to either my desktop or my documents folder, or if I've already saved things to my desktop and documents folder, I will be able to access all of those things automatically in my, uh, or my iPad that's logged into that same Apple ID. So, uh, and vice versa. So you'll actually be able to easily send stuff back and forth from one uh, device to the other without having to actually, um, airdrop things back and forth and so on. The ones I would recommend would be calendars, reminders, uh, and notes. And I'm gonna show you in a separate video how you can actually share those things together. So let's say now I have something that I created. So let's say I opened up pages here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a simple document. I'll just use a template here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to save. So I'm gonna go to file, save. And I'm gonna simply call this a geology report. And I can choose either desktop or documents folder. I'm gonna go ahead and save mine to the desktop to make it visible and hit save. And then once I do that and save that, boom, it shows up right here. On my iPad, all I have to do is find the files app. Um, the files app looks like a folder. And once I open it over here on the left-hand side, there is a spot called iCloud Drive. And this is where you're gonna find all of the things that have been synced to that iCloud Drive, including the desktop and documents folder that live in your uh, Mac. So on this folder, I should see a folder called desktop and a folder called documents. You can see it was updated today at 206. That's probably when I turned that setting on. And then when I click on desktop, I'll see all kinds of different things that have been synced from my computer, including the geology report that I went ahead and saved to my desktop. Now, if I go in here and go to edit and make changes to it, same deal, it'll take those changes, send them to the cloud, and then those changes will then also be synced down to my Mac as well. So depending on the type of file and how big it is term, determines how long that takes. Uh, simple files like um, documents, presentations, things like that go pretty quick. Uh, if you have a lot of movies or things like that, that may take a little bit longer, but that's all there is to signing in to your managed Apple ID.